that's a pretty good one. It's been one of the most noticeable things, actually, when he played his first individual event for 17 years was how good the break was, especially early on in the tournament. He made it through to the semi-finals. His break was incredible. Without huge power, he's just getting amazing explosion and getting through the ball really well and was getting great splits on repeat. Yeah, it's almost... And there'll be plenty of people who watched him play at the last Pro Series who play pool to a really good level and play pool a lot. And probably watch Mark Swan back in and just think, oh, you can't believe you make this game look so easy. Yeah, it was incredible, actually. You, you, you felt he was going to go through and, and win the event. He was playing so well, but knocked out the ha at the semi-final stage by Arf and Dad. Interestingly, he did actually play Gareth Potts in that tournament as well. Good match between those two. Obviously, Mark ended up winning it. But, yeah, the level that he played at, considering, it, it was amazing. It really was. If you are watching us for the first time with the Pairs Cup, we've got four pairs here tonight. All will play each other in a round-robin format. Top of the group come the end of the night. We'll go through two points for a win. None for a loss, one for a draw. And the draw is in play because we have a match clock, which is 20 minutes long for each match, or a race to four, whichever one comes first. I'm playing international eight ball rules. Pick your gutter set, pot your balls, pot the eight ball. Gareth and Mark going through reds very nicely. Looks like a good angle, just a slide to the right-hand side. It depends how wide it throws here. If the, two, if the yellows in the middle of the table are in play here, then this could be tough. But you can see where he's trying to get to. Yeah, the grimace on the face tells us this could be quite close to the yellow. How straight is he? Yeah, it just gets it. He's had to judge that really well because... The harder you play that, the wider the cue ball throws. It's all about really power control more than anything else, that shot. Yeah, and there'll be a lot of people sort of watching it going, well, Gareth's been on the table all weekend long, because if you don't know, he came through the Players' Championship this weekend in this venue. But the cloth was changed today. In fact, there was a, a huge operation by the Ultimate Pool team and brand new cloth. Cushions have been sorted. Or everything's been looked at. So it's completely fresh conditions. So there'll be no advantage for Gareth having been the one out there other than good match practice. Yeah, he'll be sharp. That's be sharp, sure. yeah. That was an excellent shot from Mark just to hit that gap. Yeah, it's been a very tidy clearance, hasn't it? And the eight ball, don't think it goes bottom right. It doesn't, so he's going to have to drop this in. This is tough. Dead weight. Excellent. Potted it thick as well, which holds the cue ball up. If he pots that thin, the cue ball will go past the eight ball there in terms of further up the table, making it a trickier one for, for Mark. Yeah, brilliant. Gareth has had a, a full weekend in the Players' Championships here on this table. And he'll be delighted for his first break tonight to be successful. For someone who's almost got a reputation as a, as a fantastic breaker with that sort of patented cue bend, is that... Quite a few times I've watched him recently. He's actually struggled a bit with the break in terms of, you know, a pot success. How was it this weekend for him? Well, I asked him, because I wasn't here the whole weekend, but I asked him straight away, how, how was the weekend? How'd you play? Good. How'd you break? It's like the first question you, you want to know when you're sort of talking to someone. He said, I hit them really well all weekend. How were the results? Yeah, they were okay. So you could tell there was still some inconsistency there, but he was really happy with how he hit it. And that's all you can do, is hit them well. It's an interesting one at the moment. It's something to keep an eye on for with Gareth and for the rest of the, the season and, and beyond is that one thing he's always been quite clear on is he ne he's never wanted to sort of mix the, the Q sports and something that we've not seen Mark Selby do either. But 
this is the first time in his whole career he's ever mixed cube sports. He's now back fully, fully playing Chinese eight ball. So for him, this is you know a new experience and something he's having to figure out how to sort of chop and change games. And obviously, very small sample size, but so far so good for him. Pretty handy on the snooker table, as we well, saw he's recently. Very on the, handy uh, on the snooker table on the Stephen Hendry YouTube channel. Yeah, I love the way he's gone about this, though. Yeah, pot that thick to get the the cannon on the yellow right. If he pots that centre pocket, he catch the yellow thin and end up not on this red, but played perfectly. The patterns will always be there. I think they were a little bit unlucky yeah. there. He, he's got, he's hit that as he wanted to. He's got the solid contact on, and he knows it plays a, a fairly big pocket the way it was set up. The cue ball's in a position where if the yellow they they play it off doesn't go and dislodge the two yellows in the middle of the table, they have a shot of the eight ball. Uh, okay, they needed a touch of fortune, but they they certainly got none. That's yeah. for sure. It wasn't exactly like, you know, the gap was the size of a grape to drop into. They actually had quite a bit of yeah. margin. It will cost them this frame. So 1 0 to Potts and Selby. Jester from Leicester clues in the name. Will that really yellow reach? Break, it oh, will. Oh, 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 that'll do. Well, I'm not sure about the hand of apology for this one, Mark. <laughs> You, you hit him in your hope for the best, and the ball drops in. That looked dry for all the world, though, didn't yeah. it? Just kept on going. And they've opened up quite nicely here. Reds are a, a little bit tricky, but I think there's a way you can approach all these reds in the bottom right that just sort of helps them unpick each other. Yeah, does he play short position, or does he play a little cannon on the red next to the yellow? Could play the cannon now. Decided against it. That was an attempt to make the cannon, not at that pace. Now he's got the perfect little angle to play the short position. Oh, it's just very cute, isn't it? Mark, one of the players that will be less likely to play cannons. He's, he'll back his cue ball more than most to pick him apart. And it's not to say he won't play cannons, but. In this situation, he didn't need to because the red goes, and he's very good at working those sort of situations out. Would have preferred to land a touch straighter on this red. Can go a few different way, ways around from here. You fully expect him to get them. Doesn't look great. Can he just nip this and get below the centre pocket? Yeah, he can. Straight enough. Yeah, lovely. Very good from Mark Selby. Don't think the red above the eight ball, the one by his hand now. I'm not sure it squeezes top left. If it does squeeze top left, you can see there on the overhead. Well, I can see on the overhead. There you go, <laughs> there, there you go. go. <laughs> on the overhead, it's very, very tight.
he's straight here, it's not great. But I think he's got just enough angle left side of straight so he can get to the right side cushion and back across. Looks like the plan is to play short position on the one above the eight ball at some point. I don't think he can quite get nicely on it from here. So it's going to have to be off the one on the top cushion. Not, not guaranteed to land good here. I think he's straight enough that he can just sort of pull back and as long as he gets himself somewhere near the two yellows, he's, he's pretty okay. Risk is he's going too close to them and not being on the red. Oh, yeah, the perfect angle. Yeah. Absolute perfect angle. Very nicely worked out finish from Gareth here. Obviously, assuming he puts together the final couple of balls. Never in doubt. Wow. Wow. Oh, ending it in style. Gareth Potts, Golden Breaks, Hitton Patel and Steve Singh out of the tournament. Well, that's got to be just about the perfect break, hasn't it? Have some of that. This cue ball about hits Orbit and then the eight ball goes in as well. Well, that's some way to win it. Gareth Potts and Mark Selby stay alive in the Ultimate Pool Pairs Cup. It yeah. was just red first, yeah. And I think if, cold. You, if you made me pick under no pressure whatsoever, I'd say, yeah, I think it was, but yeah, w yeah. wouldn't like to be the authority <laughs> anyway. I wasn't 100% certain on, re yeah. on a slow-mo replay, but Orich, our referee, got it right straight away. Just wanted to double check, no harm in that. In truth, I don't think it would have made a blind bit of difference. Still expect them to counter clear here with ease. Been a tough night for the Potts and Selby when you consider every single time they've been to the table, apart from one, they've cleared up. And that was when Mark missed the eight ball into left centre in their opening match, which cost them the 3 2. Oh, that's very cute. Delicate little operation, that one. Yeah, wasn't it? As played as well. Yeah, no buzzers went off. And the difference that makes now, the yellow nearest the top right goes. He's on the other one to top left. Or he can go by both ways here. Not sure if his plan was to play this one off the red because that's hard to do. But I do believe he was trying to pot it thick so that he could get the cannon on the yellow to hold the cue ball. Maybe a half a touch of fortune there for Gareth, but never looked likely to be a problem. Spaces for Gareth Potts. Not exactly the barest of margins. Well, they 
think it's all over. It is now. To the table he comes. Strangely, the one that's causing a little bit of a headache here is one right in the middle of the table. Yeah, funny that, isn't it? It doesn't go bottom left, left centre, top left. It's awkward to get on it on the right-hand side. Might be thinking about leaving it where it is, playing it top right if it goes. If not, maybe a little delicate cannon onto the yellow in a couple of shots time. Oh, it does go. I'm happy enough to play on it. Get himself right behind it. Yeah, and marks from that sort of old school sort of brigade of, of pool players who will always rather they won't fly into balls, they won't play cannons, they they will barely leave doubles. He might be playing a cannon now because of the angle he left. Yeah. There you go. Just I think say that. <laughs> his original, I think the original plan was not to move it, yeah. but he left himself just to the angle where he couldn't just drop it in to take that into the corner. So had to play the cannon then and played it well. Oh, pretty flawless, this. From Potts and Selby. There's now seven frames straight they have won. Eight ball was close again. Makes a ball this time. It's not the easiest finish in the world though, at least at first glance. Yeah, far from it. <laughs> Leg was up and everything there. He threw kitchen sink at that one. First thought here is is yellows. Does he have an opener? Reds might not be terrible if he had an opener, but I'm not sure he has. I say he has. They have. The only reason I say the reds might not be terrible is because of the the red goes top right and could open everything up there. But yellows will be the choice. sure this was the original plan. I'm not sure if he was trying to get a little bit further up the table than this. Kind of left a strange angle here. Mm. It's the one on the break line. It goes in the centre, it doesn't go in the corner. Obviously the eight ball, but I'm assuming they're going to leave the eight ball for a double. Might be a shade thin if the plan was to get on that yellow into the centre. Mm. Like could have done with maybe another turn or two up the table. Just able to get it to grip. Lovely shot. Such a good shot. But so once again, they finished just the wrong side. Mm. So they, they've just not finished nice on every ball so far. They're on this yellow, but the angle they've got isn't perfect. They can't, if they were straighter, they could just drop it in, then they've got top right, but... Well, you saw Mark pointing there. His margin to get on this yellow isn't big. Yeah, raising the butt of the queue to get some action onto the bottom of it. Shot. And I tell you what, he may even have an angle here if they wanted to play a little bump on the eight. He definitely got the angle. Oh, well. I don't think Gareth Potts can believe he's done that. I tell you what, I said at the beginning of the night that the cloth had been redone, cloth and cushions from the weekend where obviously Gareth came through in the Players' Championship. 
and that's one where it's probably hurt him because it's easy to say oh he's had plenty of table time out there over the weekend but that one will have gripped so much more than he would have seen all weekend long obviously it's a still a surprise to see him make that error yeah oh they're going to get away with it though oh that'll be the last shot in the night for Hannibal and Whitworth and that will hurt they played well tonight Darrow and Glenn It's been a difficult ending to it for them. 